Hello and welcome to UWS News. I'm Johnny Clark. We start with a story from just down the road in East Ayrshire, where the iconic Cumnock Trice has just ended. The annual classical music event is in its third year. Olivia Armstrong spoke exclusively to the festival's founder. Here at the Dumfries House, rehearsals are already underway. It's the final day of music festival The Cumnock Trist, the last four days and nights of entertainment, community and most of all, music. The Cumnock Trist brings together some of the world's greatest musicians into local venues, churches and halls, with the community at the centre of all of its activities. It was founded by composer Sir James Macmillan three years ago and has continued to find huge success throughout all of Ayrshire. It's been great. This is our third festival uh, and we've been building and building each year and uh, there's a general feeling that this is, might, might be the best yet uh, for a whole re host of reasons but, but basically we, we've had big audiences, we've packed out our halls and our venues each time and uh, there's been a lot of new music this year which is, can always be a bit of a, a risk of course, people are coming and hearing music they don't know but they've turned out in their droves and uh, have been very appreciative and, and listened with open ears. We started at a very high level, our very first concert was given by the 16 who are generally regarded as one of the great choirs of the world. So the feeling was that you might have, well, how could we go higher than that? But it, it, the calibre of the musicians year on year have been extremely high. Nicola Benedetti, for example, is a patron and she played it the first year and then she gave a concert with her trio here on, 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 on Friday night and, and that concert sold out within days of the tickets going on sale. So um, we're continually looking for the, the top musicians in the, in the world to come and I have some very exciting people who have agreed to come next year, the year after, and we're planning 19, 20, 21 now. This year the festival has been a rousing success and there is no doubt that the star quality of the music and its composers will only grow stronger in the future. Olivia Armstrong, UWS News, Cumnock. Kilmarnock midfielder Greg Kilty has been ruled out for the rest of the season due to injury. The Ayrshire outfit are in a relegation dogfight, with this news dealing a big blow to their hopes of staying in the Scottish Premiership. Callum Scott and Corrine Hall spoke to the editor of the Kilmarnock Standard and the Kelly fanzine to find out more. Devastating news that reached Kelly fans today. Greg Kilty out for the remainder of the season. What will that mean for the club? I'm in Kilmarnock today to talk to the sports editor of the Kilmarnock Standard, David Wren, and the editor of the fanzine, Sandy Armour, to hear their take on Kilty's injury. With Kilmarnock now occupying the relegation playoff spot after conceding 10 goals in their last two games, I asked Sandy if Kelly are now relegation certainties or is there still hope for Scotland's oldest professional club? Uh, and again, it's in the hands of the gods a bit, but I think there is other teams that are distinctly average. So I don't think you need to get too negative, but we definitely need to improve. Will Greg Kilty's injury have any impact on Kilmarnock financially? It tells you that January is the key time in terms of finance, when there's lots of big bills, etc. to be paid. They need money at that time of year. So if there's no money coming in, Bill Bowie's not writing cheques. The likelihood is Jones would try and sell our base players. That's the reality. That's how he works, he sells assets. However, David Wren believes Adam Frizzell is already an able replacement. He's a fantastic player, I think he has a strength about him for an 18 year old boy that's, that's you know, hard to come by, arguably stronger than, than Kilty in a physical sense. I asked David if the up and coming international break was a good thing for the Usher side as they aim to get back to basics in the training field. Yeah, international teams play often club football sort of forgotten about, I think that's the, the working command's favour because the last two games have been so there you have it then. Greg Kilty's injury may not be as detrimental as some might have thought. The only way for Kilmarnock is sure we are. Callum Scott, UWS News. Scotland's national football team faced Lithuania on Saturday in their second World Cup qualifier. Callum Fisher and Hamish Carton heard from fans ahead of the crucial tie. On Saturday, Scotland faced another big challenge in their quest for World Cup qualification in 2018 when they play Lithuania here at Hamden Park in Glasgow. Scotland manager Gordon Strachan said that the game wasn't a must win when talking to press on Tuesday. Let's see how the Scottish punters feel about it in Glasgow City Centre. How do you think we'll go on the Saturday then? Do you think we'll get the win against Lithuania? Ah, we should win, I think. They'll sell it defensively, but I think we should be able to get some goals. Is that a 
I'm not spinning for you, drinking it, winning it. I'd say, 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 so there you go, the message is clear from the Scottish fans. It's over to you, Gordon Strachan. Hamish Carton, UWS News, Glasgow. The University of the West of Scotland's Air Campus has been lacking sports team for several years. Ada Adamchak spoke to the uni's President of Sport and Wellbeing to find out why. I am here at UWS with the President of Sport and Wellbeing, talking about the situation of sports clubs in Air Campus and his plans on how to deal with it in the future. My name is Jonathan, I'm the President of Sport and Wellbeing. Um, my role is I'm the elected representative for students um, for a year. His main concern in the beginning was the fact that there are no sport offered for the Air or Hamilton campus. Right now the situation looks much better as there are more and more clubs created in both of the campuses. So we now have six sports teams taking part in Hamilton and we now have an Air who have um, started a rugby club. So we have that on a Monday night which has been quite successful and we're starting up a badminton club on a Wednesday afternoon as well. The problem with Air Campus is that there are no many people who would facilitate the clubs. To make that situation better, they brought sports students from SRUC to make sure that there are people who would hold on the session as a proposition needs to be a lead from the students, not from the staff. So we're getting there, we're getting there slowly but surely. As much as there are many facilities in air, this is not so easy to bring the sport into the campus anymore. The prices are too high for the campuses to take care of it by, by themselves. There's never been a coordinated effort to get sports on this campus before. So that's one of my main things when I ran for election was to make sure that we have a cross-campus offering. Um, and to make sure that the, creating a club process is as easy as possible and they're supported through that. I think in the past students have tried to create something and there's potentially not been the support there. So that's one of the main things I've been working on this year. Students can now relax as plans are being made to bring sport into AIR campus. Adriana Damtrak from UWS AIR. That's all from us here at UWS News. I'm Johnny Clark. Good night.